Hey everyone! Welcome to a new studio vlog! If you're new here and you don't know me, my name is Bernie and I am an artist and potter in Sweden. In this studio vlog, I'll be working on some new ceramic, showing you life as a full-time potter, and finally giving you a tour of the studio. Thanks for being here and welcome to my pottery studio. Okay, let me fix my hair a bit. Okay. Hey friends, so today is a rare day that I'm gonna be actually in the studio for a full day. And I thought that this morning, maybe I would actually film for the first time in forever again. As you've seen, I haven't been very good at doing my YouTube videos, but that's just because I've been busy. I thought I would take the opportunity today to show you a bit of life in the ceramic studio. Most days I'm actually not usually here for an entire eight hours. I'm usually only here between like maybe four and five hours and I usually work an additional three or four hours at home. So being here early is actually like a really nice treat, which means I have more time to do stuff and also film. I thought I'd maybe just take you around today and show you a bit of the stuff I need to do, what it's like to be a full-time potter and also maybe like a mini studio tour. I actually wanted to make like a separate video, but I realized now that I don't really know how I'm gonna make an entire video of the studio tour when it'll probably only take like a few minutes to really show you all the rooms and stuff. So the things to do today include uh, attaching handles to some of the pots I had thrown earlier this week. Um, I need to mix a whole bunch of glazes. Uh, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a bit of my, my day actually. I also need to do some sculpting and I need to do some painting. So I have a lot of stuff I need to finish up this week and then I need to start firing my stuff again. So I'm actually gonna turn you around and show you the shelf of my stuff that's currently in progress. Actually, while I'm at it, maybe I just show you this room to start. So, um, this is the main working room. This has gone through a lot of changes and I've rearranged it several times now, but this is where I do a lot of my sculpting and hanging out and admin work and stuff like that, actually. As you can see, it is still pretty messy. Actually, most of the studio is still really messy, so you can see that there are some bags and stuff on the floor still, some chairs. There's a hole in the wall over there because um, we had a pipe that was leaking, so they had to do some repairs and they still haven't fixed the hole yet. And then uh, here though, here's where most of the work happens. The thing I originally wanted to show you is actually this wall. So this is where basically all of my works in progress of everything I'm doing sits. I've organized it so that I have a little wet box down here with some of my ceramics that I have thrown. And these are all the things that are still slightly wet, as the name says. Um, oops, I don't know if you can see it. It's a bit dark, sorry. As you can see, I have a bunch of pots and stuff that are currently in progress. The next shelf here is all of my greenware. So once my pottery has dried, it goes into this phase. So you can see here, I have these little birds that I need to paint in two budgies. And then these ones are actually gonna be some tiger mugs. So this will actually not be painted in this phase. They will be glazed with a special decal. But all of these, all these dishes, I threw a whole bunch of dishes um, and they all need to be painted. There is a variety of stuff here. As you can see, there are some planters, some mugs, some plates, some more planters. It's, it's a huge mix of things. So then I have this shelf up here, which is all of my bisqueware. And actually this isn't all the bisqueware. Some of the bisqueware still sits in the kiln room, but these are the bisque pieces that have been sitting here for a while waiting to be glazed or I haven't decided how I want to paint them yet. I'm not really sure if I've ever shown this dragon piece before, but I love it so much and I'm so afraid of painting it and making it like a weird and ugly color. So it has been sitting here for probably months. And I think this is probably like a year old piece. I just think it's so cute. And I remember when I had made this, this was a really hard form for me to throw on the wheel. So I was really, really careful with how I was going to, you know, paint this piece because I didn't know if I would ever be able to make something like it again. But since then I've actually improved a lot and I actually can throw this form much more easily now. But yeah, pretty much this is just the collection of pieces that have been waiting to be glazed for quite some time. I don't know if you notice the top shelf up there, but you can see some quote unquote finished pieces, but these are all the pieces that actually I can't sell. They all came from my first kiln fail, which was the very first firing I ever did. Um, and before anyone's like, oh, you should sell them, they're just not usable. They were totally overfired and the glaze was way too thick. So they now just sit on the top shelf um, as a reminder of my failure and so that they can look down and judge me. <laughs> So as you can see, there's quite a lot to do today. I actually need to pack some orders as well. And that will probably be the first thing that I do because I like to pack all the orders before I get into the clay things because 
clay things usually get pretty messy with like dust and all that stuff. So I'm gonna pack a few orders first and then get to work. So this is the packing room and it is the messiest room here. It is a bit sad because there's just stuff everywhere and it's really chaotic and I've tried to clean it up multiple times. Um, and this is actually the most organized it's been. I know it doesn't look like it, but it's the most organized it's been. And I can't really complain because now I have all of this stuff in here instead of in our apartment where it used to be. Actually, the biggest reason I wanted to get a studio was because we ended up having just so much stuff in our apartment that was my business stuff and not like my personal belongings. And it was just taking up so much space. We would have boxes and boxes of just like inventory sitting in the hallway. And I just felt constantly bad about, you know, cluttering our home space. And it was also really stressful. So even though this room is very chaotic and stressful, it is somewhat organized that I can use it at least. And I like not having it in like our home, having, you know, kind of like separate spaces. The thing that kind of sucks is of course, I have to actually travel to my workspace now if I'm not doing like things that revolve around, you know, the computer and stuff like that. If I actually wanna pack orders or make things, I have to come here. And it is definitely a separation of my home life and my business. And I mean, I can't really complain that much because I think that that's something that I really needed. I used to work a lot. If you've seen any of my other videos, I was constantly just tired and busy. I think I'm starting to have more of a balance now, which is really nice. I can't chat too much longer. I really need to start getting to work. So it's not gonna be like a really nice aesthetic packing video. Unfortunately, I don't have very much decoration in here, but we are gonna pack a few orders now. Okay, I finished packing orders now and now I need to figure out if I'm gonna be making handles or um, mixing my glazes instead. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make handles instead because I really don't wanna mix my glazes. Mixing glazes is always very tiring to do. Uh, Cause you know, there's like a lot of like measuring and stuff like that. And I think I just want to make some handles. So um, we're going to be doing that instead. So we're actually entering the other very exciting room. And I realized now it's so bright. Hold on, let me fix this here. So this is the throwing room. As you can see, there is my wheel down here and a painting that I had made a little while ago. Um, I'm actually gonna turn this around because I realize that it's really hard to see. And this is actually where I spend most of my time when I'm making pottery. It is the room that has my wheel, as you can see here, all of my supplies over there, and also my um, glazing shelf. So that is where all of my glazes currently sit. Actually, I don't usually mix glazes in this room. I mix them outside now that I have the opportunity to, uh, to keep the air quality in this room. But you can see, I just have like a whole bunch of tools on this table, um, some Fanta cans, which yes, I drank the Fanta because I love this Fanta, but I actually use them to make my handles. Like I just use the roundness of them to make the shape of the handle that I want. Some sculpting tools, sponges, harp tool for cutting clay. Then over here on the left is my wedging table. I have my scale for measuring out my clay. This is actually a new scale that I just got which I actually super, super love. I was using a digital scale before. This was my digital scale. The problem with using a digital scale was that even though it was really, really accurate, it kept getting so dirty with clay. And if you like look closely, there's like clay between all the buttons and stuff like that. And I need this scale for measuring my glazes and I didn't want to keep getting it so dirty. So that's why I have my new scale, which is like a manual scale and I got it for sale from somebody on Facebook Marketplace. I'm actually really, really happy with it. Whole bunch of clay, lots and lots of clay. These are these two bags are my usual clay that I use, the speckled clay, and down there is just like the abyss of clay types that I don't know what I'm gonna do with. You can see like there's the brown clay from last year's collection. There's this white clay that I don't even know what I what I did. I think I bought like one bag of it and now I have like two kilos of clay just sitting in there. If you look even more close, you can see just like lumps of clay down here, which like, I'm not even sure what color clay this is right now. What I may do one day is just take all of my mystery clay and just recycle it all together to make a new type of clay. So that is the abyss. That is the wedging table, tool table. And actually all these tools don't usually exist there. Um, I just put them there because usually they're on my wedging table, but I needed to use the table. 
I need to find a better storage system for this and I think I'm gonna put something on the wall there to put all my tools. Fingers crossed I can do that really soon because I need that table always clear for rolling stuff around and also mixing glazes. Actually not mixing glazes, but like glazing things. So as you can see, that is the glazing shelf with all of my different types of glazes and down there, Lots of mystery bags of powder that I'm gonna have to mix later. The wheel, of course, where I spend happy moments but not very much time on because I don't spend much time on the wheel. I usually spend a lot more time painting and sculpting. And then these two empty shelves. I recently moved these two shelves in here. They were in other areas of the studio, but I would like to start moving all of the work that you had seen in the other room onto these two shelves. Mainly because then the work is just kind of all in one area and I don't have to tote it between two different rooms. So I'm actually going to be trying a new technique for pulling handles and it's basically pulling handles straight off of the mug. I've seen Florian Katz do this before and I have tried it without very good success. But I did recently watch a new Skillshare video about how to do this and I wanted to try it again. I've been on a mission trying to figure out how to make a really good and comfortable handle that's unique to my style. And I do really like the look of these handles. I think they look very natural to the form. And I think if I can master this technique, it's going to really speed up my process. Well, I think it kind of worked. It's definitely not as elegant as the person in the video I just watched. Hers was definitely a lot like thinner here, I think. Her handle just looked nicer, to be honest. But at the same time, like, I actually kind of like this. I, I really like the look of this. It feels more organic and I think it's going to be really comfortable to hold. I can't really test it right now, but even just right here, I feel like it's going to be a really nice handle. So I practiced some more with a few more with the mugs and I think I made about 10 mugs using this technique and definitely by the end of it I was a lot more comfortable with pulling the handles off of the actual pot itself. I was a little worried that the handles might crack but actually after a few days when I came back I had no problems with handles cracking. I of course let them dry in a wet box for a little bit before moving them into the, just the open air but yeah, it's probably one of the easiest times I've ever had with making handles. The question now though is whether or not people like this more organic look or the usual handles that I make. Good morning! Um, I went to the shop this morning and got some buckets. So uh, yesterday I said I was going to mix glazes and I didn't have any buckets. Now I today have the buckets and I still don't want to mix glazes. <laughs> so I have a lot of things on the shelf that I'm gonna to have to fire for my first firing and the bisque. And I'm actually thinking about possibly throwing some more um, mugs today so that I can have like just a lot of stuff ready for when I start doing glaze firing. So I'm really excited because my past self actually prepared all of these balls of clay for me to throw right away so I don't have to like do any preparation. I can just get to throw them today. The interesting thing about pottery is that the throwing process is probably the shortest time in the entire process. I spend so much more time trimming, glazing, and just doing everything else. And I think the perception is that potters basically just sit on the wheel all the time playing with clay, but that's just not the reality of it. I think it's probably just the most fun part to watch, which is why you always see it on social media. You rarely ever see anybody doing things like mixing glazes or sanding because there's a lot of parts of the pottery process where you actually have to wear a respirator and it just doesn't look very aesthetic. The reality is that for a really experienced potter, throwing a piece like this could take one to two minutes and that's just such a small fraction of everything else that a potter has to do to make a finished piece. I'm still pretty inexperienced compared to other potters. I mean, you saw those pieces that were just complete fails and I've been a lot more strict about the quality of the pieces that I make. If it's off center, if it's just not going well, I just basically throw it out now. In the past, I would usually just try to save everything as best as I could, but I'm just, I, I guess I'm past that phase now and I just want to work on the best pieces. Now, here I am cleaning up my wheel and I do always try to clean up my powder room every time I finish throwing because I don't want that clay to be building up and it's just nice when it's clean. <laughs> When I'm finished in here, I move all the pieces into the larger room and put them into the wet box to dry. 
So I took a short break for lunch and then I came back to just kind of look at everything that was on the shelf and I was pretty surprised to see how many things I have here. It's been a really long time since I've actually focused on making pottery and it's both exciting and overwhelming looking at the number of pieces that I need to finish and are just kind of halfway done. I decided to move all the dry greenware into the kiln room to make some more space on my shelves, but this is the chance to show you my kiln room. So you're currently in my kiln room, which is I think the last room to show you actually. So you can see my kiln is here and before you freak out, because I know there's a lot of stuff in here, this kiln is currently not like turned on, there's no electricity going to it or anything because I haven't used it for more than a month. And so I've been using this room as like a storage room. So as you can see, there are like a couple tables back here which I need to set up in the inventory room. <sighs> and I just haven't had time to do it. So they're just sitting here next to my kiln, which hasn't been used in more than a month. <laughs> and just to flip this around and show you how <laughs> unused this room currently is. You just see like there's just stuff everywhere. I don't even remember the last time I even ran the kiln. I think it was probably back in December and it's basically March now and I'm pretty sure it was back in December because those two things on the ground here are my new kiln shelves which I got at the start of January. <laughs> you can see there are a bunch of pieces that are sitting on this shelf here and a lot of the pieces on this shelf are actually just my test glazes and stuff like that. Then the other shelf is the bisque shelf and the greenware shelf. The last thing I did in the studio was paint some of the greenware to start working on that huge load of just ceramics that needed to be finished. This is probably one of the things that takes me the absolute longest in my whole process. I'm currently painting with underglaze on greenware and I used to actually paint on bisqueware but it used to give me a lot of problems with my glaze crazing. So I found that switching to painting on greenware actually just kind of eliminated that problem altogether. The brand that I'm using is called Deco Pottery Color. It is a Swedish brand and I would highly recommend them actually. I've never had a problem with my glaze running and I only ever need to paint on one layer and the colors are always so vibrant. So if you get the chance to try Deco Pottery Color, I would definitely recommend giving it a go. This is the last piece that I'll be making for this studio vlog and it is a little bird for a friend of mine and we're doing an art trade and so it's a special little budgie piece. I'm so excited to finally show you what the pottery studio looks like. I got the keys to this place sometime last summer and I know it's still in a state, it still needs a lot of work but it is my personal creative space. It is my pride and joy, also my source of frustration. It's like my child, <laughs> but I'm really proud of it and I'm really, really excited to finally show you what my little art studio looks like. So just wanna say thanks for being here and hanging out and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.